So you want to build yourself a creator PC and your budget is roughly around $1,500 up to $2,000. And you're wondering what to buy? What's the best performance for my money? Well, you're in the right place. I'm going to be showing you how to build one, which part to choose and everything you need to know in order to get one for yourself and a little bit of a surprise as well. So we're going to get the, the best performance, so no money wasted and the best price for you. So nothing is wasted in your budget. Do you know what else is not wasted? This sponsored segment. Skytech Gaming makes the PC building easy. In fact, we're giving away one for free. Choose a pre-built system or configure it to your needs. A PC solution to fit any of your budgets. Skytech Gaming prides itself with excellent customer service and an amazing community of people. Check out their weekly PC giveaways down below. One of my favorite mid-range PCs for creators is one called Shiva. With i5, 12600K, RTX 3060 Ti, Z690 motherboard and DDR5 memory. It's not just powerful but also affordable. Another noteworthy PC is Cronus which received It's Better Than Dell by Steve from Gamers Nexus. After Steve's review, that Cronus became the most sold system on their website. By the way, Skytech Gaming is about to launch their creator line of PCs called Skytech Pro. So learn more about that in the description below as well as the Shiva and Cronus PCs. Thanks Skytech Gaming for sponsoring this video. Five plus one very quick important things before we're gonna talk about the parts. Number one, different budgets. This is part of a video series. This is video number two and we're talking about like $1,500 to $2,300 budget range. If your budget is a bit less, check out the previous video, which I'm going to also link in the description below. Or if your budget is a little bit more, you can find those in the description below as well. So you can build any PC for your budget, whatever budget you have, there's a PC that you can build in this video series or you can configure it, everything to your needs. And the fifth video is going to be a surprise video, which you'll learn more about in a moment. Number two, you might be wondering how to build it. There's going to be a build guide linked in the description below. So if you watch them, you can step by step, follow it and build your PC. I might not be using exactly the same parts as you might be purchasing, but everything still slots in the same place. It might be slightly in a different place, but there's a part for whatever I'm talking about or whatever part you have. There is going to be exactly the same part in a different motherboard or so on. It's going to be very, very easy. Just follow them. Number three, you might be wondering, how do I configure this? What about the OS and software? I'm going to leave full guides in the description below as well. So you can easily just follow along very slowly, do exactly the same as I'm doing on your PC. And then you can get your fans configured, your software configured, your drivers configured, BIOS configured, firmware, software, everything sorted for you. Number four, where to buy them. You can find all the links for all the parts and upgrades and everything that I'm talking about in the description below. And when you click, for example, on a CPU link or buying link, then it's going to give you a few options. And that's there so that you can choose your favorite shop and also check the latest and best pricing for you. I highly recommend check out all the stores so you're not going to miss out any of the dollars that you might be able to spend on something else. Number five, surprise PC build. Okay, we're going to talk about that in the end of the video. So be nice and wait till the end of the video and you're going to get a little bit of a surprise what's coming up because it's very exciting and I'm sure you're going to be excited about that as well. And the last question you might have is what about the 13th gen from Intel or Ryzen 7000? Are they going to be any good? Because they might be out by the time you're watching this or they might uh, be launched any minute now. The thing is with new CPU launch, GPU launch, there's always going to be problems with the new. There's going to be early adapters who are going to find, oh, this is not working. That's crashing. That's not working well. So if you're a creator and you're working actually professionally, you're getting paid for doing your work on a computer, I highly recommend you waiting for a few months before jumping onto the new ship just because you're going to have early adapter problems. And that's what we want to avoid here. And we're not going to go with that. There's going to be an updated guide coming out in the new year, 2023. And there we're going to look at the pages again and see which is going to be the best bank for bug, create a PC for you to build. But right now, I highly I recommend you go with this 12th gen of Intel series just because you're going to get the best value for your money. And even if the new generation is out for the next few months, these prices are going to drop even more, which means you're going to get even more bang for your buck. Let's go. The budget is $1,500 and let's build the PC. Now I'm excited because you're going to get a killer PC. First of all, motherboard Gigabyte Aero G Z690 DDR4 variant. Now very important, DDR4, not DDR5. Okay. And this is going to be one of the 
the best. There is one better motherboard for DDR4 um, on Intel's 12th gen, which is going to be this one over here. ROG Strix Z698 Gaming Wi-Fi D4. You can check that out as well, but it might be a lot more expensive than this. But this Gigabyte one will give you a lot of M.2 storage. It's going to give you very good and fast ports for connectivity. You need to connect your hard drives, peripherals, uh, you know, sound cards, uh, capture cards, all sorts of things. There's plenty of ports to do everything and give you fast front panel AIO as well. Very, very good motherboard. I've seen a lot of people have bought them through my links already. It's the most sold product um, in the last year. So definitely highly recommend you go check that out as well. I've got a full video on my channel if you want to check out the review for that as well. But now the CPU, we're going to go with 12600K. And this is going to be a 10 core CPU i5. It's a killer CPU. It's not just going to be running cool, but it also gives you loads of performance. It has an iGPU inside that helps you with encoding the video and timeline performance for your video editing software. It's called Intel QuickSync. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Those 10 core are better than any of the previous generation CPUs that are out there. So absolutely ridiculous performance from i5. Think about that. i5 now is better than any of the i9s from previous generations. Blows my mind. For cooler now, we're actually upgrading the cooler from the previous budget on the previous video to Thermal Ride Peerless Assassin uh, 120. And that's going to cost you around $38. And this is going to be like ridiculous cooler. It's going to be good to actually cool the i7 as well if you want to go with i7. Perhaps even i9 because it really is like out there with like one of the best coolers that you can get. Definitely best bang for buck in terms of cooling performance per money what you pay for it. Two towers plus there's a lot of configuration what color you like it. You like it black, gray, silver, white. Check it out. It's going to be there. But the main thing is it's going to actually give you a little bit of upgrade ability if you want to go with an i7 later on or upgrade this in the future. For the OS drive, we're going to go with one terabyte team group Cardia Z440 drive. That's going to be Gen 4 drive. So we're going to get roughly about 4.5 gigabytes per second read and write speeds. It's also got a very good terabyte written spec. So you don't need to worry about if you're writing big files on it all the time. If you don't know what terabyte written spec means, I highly recommend you go check out my storage workflow guide for creators where I'm actually going to go more in depth about terabyte written spec and what does it mean for creators. And now our budget actually allows us to have a secondary NVMe drive as well. Bear in mind our motherboard has four so you still have a lot of upgrade ability. For the secondary drive we're going to use Crucial P3 2 terabyte drive which is going to cost roughly around $165 at the time of making this and that's where all the big projects are gonna uh, lie on. Now you might be able to actually swap these out as well, get this crucial drive as one terabyte one for the OS and then have the Cardia Z440 as two terabyte drive on the main project drive because that's where all the projects arrive and separate your OS and programs for the project drive. That's just going to be, you know, much better storage workflow and editing workflow for you, whether you are, you know, 3D photo, video, audio, whatever you're doing. For RAM, we're going to go with 64 gigabytes of Team Groom Vulcan set. So there's two sticks and this is going to be just absolutely amazing for you as a creator. It's going to give you a lot of expandability to go with 128 gigabytes later on, but also gives you a lot of breathing room for for multitasking and doing a lot of things at the same time. And in my workflow, I can easily see 64 gigabytes used all the time for video editing in Premiere Pro. So if you're doing similar things, 64 gigabytes is going to be a very, very, very good spot for you. It's 3600 megahertz and very, very kind of good speed. Not like the faster speed, but you're going to pay a lot more for your speed when you go faster, but not that much more of performance. And if you want to know like 3200 megahertz versus 3600 megahertz that I highly recommend you go check out my DDR4 versus DDR5. This Video where you actually see the performance difference and how much performance difference it's going to give you and there you can see the different DDR4s there as well. It's linked in the corner there. Now for the GPU, we're still going to use the same GPU RTX 3060. Nothing has changed much there from the previous budget, from the previous video. But this 3060 is going to be great for you because you're going to have quite a lot of GPU power, calculating power, because there is quite a big of a jump between the RTX 3050 and 3060. We're going to get 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which is quite rare in the lower end of the you know GPUs. So if you're doing like 3D where you need like big kind of scenes or something like that that use a lot of VRAM, you're doing uh, video editing in DaVinci Resolve, for example, or even Premiere Pro mixed kind of codecs, this VRAM is going to be... Um, 
nice addition for you. For PSU, we're going to be using the EVGI G5 650 watt PSU. It's modular power supply, so your cable management is going to be very nice. It's going to be 80 plus gold power efficiency rating, which is going to be very efficient for you, and you're not going to lose any extra power to just like power inefficiency. And 650 watt for this type of workload is still going to be enough for you to upgrade the CPU and GPU later on. For case, we're actually going to be upgrading this to Corsair 4000D, which is going to be a little bit more like an upgrade to the case. We have a little bit more better airflow, a little bit more quality, maybe looks a little bit nicer. I'm a big fan of this. We've done a few builds with this on the channel before. And overall, this totals at $1,584 at the time of me making the build. Highly recommend you go check out the prices in the description below so you get the latest pricing because it might be even cheaper for you. And if something's out of stock, I'm going to leave very equivalent spec kind of parts there as well, just so you can go with any of those parts and find the best performance for you. Now, if your budget allows you to have a bit of flex in there and perhaps stretch it anywhere from 1500 to 2300 then this is what i would do so we're going to leave the motherboard the same and the cpu we're going to be upgrading to i7 12700k we're going to be getting extra two cores and extra two threads which is going to be amazing 12 cores now a lot more calculating power a single core performance is going to be better and that's going to cost you extra 130 dollars now this might be a little bit more expensive at the time of me making the the video but usually it's roughly around 70 dollars extra or something like that so hopefully this is going to be a better price when you're watching this video the cooler is going to be the same because it's very very good to even cool this i7 12700k and for the ssd configuration we're still going to leave it exactly the same as well as on the previous one and the same with ram we're still going to be using 64 gigabytes of a ram unless you want you can put the budget to ram and get 120 28 gigabytes but i think you're going to get more performance when we're going to be upgrading the gpu so we're going to upgrade that to rtx 3080 10 gigabyte version here and i can see this going for around 739 dollars here at the moment and this is going to cost you extra 360 dollars but we're going to get so much more performance now you might be saying hey i'm losing extra two gigabytes of vram yes true but your vram is going to be actually much faster and your GPU calculating or GPU just raw performance is going to be so much more and so much better. So if you're doing 3D or color grading or using DaVinci Resolve or something like that, then this GPU is really going to just give you extra oomph in your performance there. And the GPU is something that you can actually carry into the future upgrades very, very easily. So that's why we're going with this as well, even if you upgrade something else you know then gpu can go into the next build we're also going to be upgrading the power supply to 850 watts exactly the same a model of the power supply from evj but now 850 watts just to kind of keep up with the power draw and give you a little bit of a flex for the future future upgrades also another upgrade we are going to do is we're going to add some extra fans for our corsair for thousand d airflow case and for those fans we're going to be using the arctic p12 a rgb uh, 120 millimeter zero db fans and you can get a three pack of those and that's going to cost you roughly around 50 dollars or so and we're going to get two of those so we're going to get six fans it's going to cost us actually 100 dollars for the fans but we're going to get very nice fans over there and they're rgb as well you can get them black and white so you can decide whether you want your whole build to be like white or black very like good airflow good price you're not going to get better rgb fans for the like better price it's absolutely ridiculous how good they are so this now is going to give much better airflow for your gpu and the cpu inside it's going to cool the pc case much better than previously and the upgrade here is going to get you to 2214 dollars roughly around here now now you might be saying you said 2300 and yes there is a little bit of an extra flex to get perhaps another ssd for you or upgrade the ssd to a little bit of a higher capacity to really fit your project workflow or your you know project drive depending what your size of project is is. And you might be saying, what about the GPU? Why did you upgrade from 3060 to 3080? Well, the 3070 and 3070 Ti is very marginal steps up from 3060 and 3060 Ti. You might be going with that as well. And depending if you want that, if you're doing 3D, then yes, you get like that much performance more as well. The like upgrade is very, very linear. But 
for other people like for video editing perhaps and for actually 3d as well that 3080 is going to be big jump from 3070 just because of the extra vram and the gpu has so much more calculating performance so i think like anything in between is kind of like hard to justify for me but the 3080 does feel like okay there's quite a bit of oomph in performance and that's why we went with that one now just remember you don't have to do all of these upgrades you can do some of them you can do some of the other ones later on but these are some of the upgrades that i would do but don't do any more than that because any more than that would actually get you to the next price bracket which is two thousand and five hundred dollars and if you're roughly around that point then check out the next video which we're going to be getting or filming any moment now but now the surprise we have a giveaway video coming okay the fifth video of this video series is going to be a giveaway video just to celebrate 100k on the channel we're going to be building a killer creator pc that's actually better than my current personal rig that i have over here so i'm going to be jealous whoever is going to get this oh and excitingly i have some last minute developments in fact we're actually giving away two pcs one in the uk and one in the us so definitely check out the details in the description below where you can already enter the giveaway of the pc what you're going to be getting there's going to be a few things extra there as well so you should be very very excited about that because i am finally i can give something back to you guys a little way of doing that and very importantly just be aware of scam comments and things like that there's going to be a lot of scam comments saying you've won something pay for postage or things like that if someone asks you to pay for something it's not gonna be legit i'm never gonna ask you to like pay for your giveaway what's the point in that it's absolutely ridiculous so we're going to be announcing the giveaway winner as well live in a video so stay tuned on the channel if you want to get the the, um, the pc or that creator pc it might be yours so that's more details in the description below thanks guys for watching subs and likes and i'll see you in the next video bye bye